how's your gavel working out? Good morning. We're glad to see everybody here this morning. Uh, glad you could be with us. I told somebody yesterday morning in a meeting that 7.30 in Atlanta seems a whole lot e earlier than 7.30 in Winder, Georgia does, and it still feels that way today. But uh, we do have a couple of important items that we need to take care of this morning and uh, need to be able to do that so we can be at rules with them at uh, 9 this morning uh, in order for them to be on the floor tomorrow. Uh, Chairman Jay Neal, yes. would you mind giving, doing an invocation for us? Thank you. Father, we, we thank you today for the privilege to bow our hearts before you. We come to you with a humble heart. Uh, we thank you for this day. We thank you for um, uh, protection as we made our way to the Capitol today. And Lord, as we look at the, um, uh, the business of the people today, we pray that you would give us wisdom and guidance and direction and uh, help us to follow um, your leadership in determining the best interest of the state rather than focusing on our personal agendas. And we we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chairman Neal. Okay, this morning, the first bill we're going to take up is going to be House Bill 806. And the author is our Chairman of the Transportation Committee, Jay Roberts. And Mr. Chairman, if you're ready, the podium is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, I come to you this morning with House Bill uh, 806. Um, a lot of you have heard the situation that we have over at GDOT where there's uh, about a billion dollars there that can't be used right now that's already been assigned to projects. Uh, we've got a problem with the uh, accounting and basically the Department of Audits has come in and said that until we fix it legislatively, that they can't move that money forward and continue to spend it. It's prior year motor fuel dollars that's rolling over into the next fiscal year. Uh, Chairman Houston uh, on appropriations is handling uh, up to this point through the appropriations process. What this bill does is as we move forward after this, uh, starting this next fiscal year, uh, allows us to take and use prior year motor fuel dollars that hasn't been spent into the next year. Uh, you, a lot of times we'll have a situation where the department will go on and pay 100% for the project and wait for reimbursement back from the federal government. That money comes back at about 80%, and a lot of times it may not get back that year. It comes back in the next fiscal years when they're reimbursed from the federal government. This bill simply allows them to be able to, to move that forward. But, and if you'll read in the bill, it says that it is still subject to the appropriation of the legislature. It is uh, in no way gives them the authority to spend it outside of where we tell them to spend it. And Mr. Chairman, I'll be glad to answer any questions if there are any. Got some backup on you, don't I? <laughs> well, I have some questions for you too, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> That's why we've got doorkeepers here; they can remove folks. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm curious, and this is a serious question. Sure. There's, there's a 20% ceiling or limitation in the bill, at least in the bill that I have on my desk here. Can you tell us where the 20% comes from? Is that constitutional or what is the basis of the 20 percent sure limit? a lot of times there's projects that uh, one let me say this allows up to 20 percent to be moved over into the next year but 
uh, and, and I'm sure the department's here somewhere, they'll tell you they usually spend 100% of the money. They usually don't have that 20% to roll over. But if there's a situation where they actually have a project that is ongoing and they need to, to move that money over into the next year to continue paying it, it allows up to 20% to be rolled over into that next year to allow the payment on that project. He's still got it. My question, though, is why 20 percent? Why not 22, not 30? What? It's good. It's a good. Good question, and Mr. Leader, all, all I can tell you is that's all that they said they needed to go up to 20 percent, maybe. But as they said, most of the time there is uh, there is no money to roll over. They use it all anyway. Okay. Next, Chairman Stevens. Thank you, Mr. The bottom line is that's a couple of years ago when we went from the accrual method to the cash method of accounting is the whole problem, correct? That's correct. Okay, that, that appears to be all the questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate your favorable consideration. Yes, sir. At this point, we will entertain a motion. Have a motion. We have a second. Motion and a second to pass uh, the substitute in front of you, LC 343273S, out of the Appropriations Committee, on to rules. All those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. And I'm going to turn the chair over to Chairman Earhart, and we'll talk a little bit about money now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We recognize the Chairman of the Appropriation Committee, Representative England. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning again. We come to you this morning with the 12 amended budget. You should have a copy of the tracking document on your desk in front of you. Um, I would like to thank several people, but first, we have a birthday boy in the room, someone we all know very well, Mr. Tom Daniels. He is celebrating 60 years young today. Happy birthday. <laughs> Tom, we appreciate what you do and what you do for the university system. Thank you for being with us on your birthday at 7.30. Well, I would be remiss if I didn't start off by thanking a large group of people that helped put these documents in front of you this morning. First, let me start with our vice chairs, Chairman Houston, Chairman Dempsey, or Chair Lady Dempsey and Chair Lady Houston, Chairman Earhart, Rinders, Parrish, Dixon, Hill, and Powell. Thank you very much for all that y'all have done. We have been on an expedited schedule to get the bill to this point. Uh, everybody understands how important it is for the state agencies that, that are relying on understanding what they've got to comply with for the rest of the year. And probably most importantly, school systems that are needing to know if they're going to get their mid-year adjustments and those sorts of things. Now along with those folks, the ones that are behind the scenes that make all of us look good, of course our budget director, the House Budget Office Director, Martha Wigdon. Uh, our Deputy Director Christine Murdoch, our Senior Analyst Margie Coggins and Scott Blunt, uh, Tracy Atchison, Kendra Mitchell, Jeremy Dickerson, Buck Dixon, Sarah Dunn, Megan Larkins, and the lady that's the glue in the office, uh, Alicia, I can't even say it this morning, <laughs> help me, what? Hodala, thank you. It just wasn't coming out this morning. And we, we do have an intern with us also, uh, Kayla. She's been running around in circles and doing everything. We appreciate all that she's done. Uh, and my apologies to Alicia for just slaughtering her last name, but she'll give me grief about that later. I do want to run through a few comments very quickly here at the beginning. Then we will go through the document, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a second. As we've already stated, the uh, amended fiscal year 12 budget is a very deliberate, no frills approach to financial management of the state. The 18.5 billion amended budget that you see in front of you shows a net increase of about 255 million or about a 1.39% increase in total funds. Without the increases dedicated to fund sources, 
The state general funds only increase about 1.3 percent or 209 million, of which 165.6 million is the mid-year adjustment for K-12. There um, is a, a still a fairly strong expectation of actual revenue growth and income uh, for sales tax and income tax that of course creates what we call new money of about $102 million. The governor uses a uh, the 20 percent of that to reverse payments into the Treasury by a few of the state authorities that we thought we would need to get through the uh, this fiscal year. The revenue shortfall reserve or rainy day fund began with a balance of 116 million after audits and uh, lapse funds it was funded at about 493 million. That enabled the governor to then withdraw the full 1% mid-year adjustment for education in his proposal. Even less, the 165.6, the RSR, will hold at about 328 million for the final quarter of this year. Then again, when surpluses are added and reductions are needed uh, to finish out the year. Uh, the 12 budget has only a handful of additions and those were made to agencies that, that were needing adjustments or, or fine-tuning. The House version of the budget does recognize an additional $1.2 in additional revenue, mainly from three sources, one of those being the, uh, the funds at DOT, about $713 million in prior year motor, motor fuels, $550 in a federal match for uh, school nutrition, 15.1 million in DCH to reflect additional FMAP earnings uh, to the uh, state Medicaid management information system. Cuts to state agencies do total about 110 million, or a, a real close to a 2% average. The biggest adjustments, of course, are in K-12 education, 85.9 million for student growth in QBE and 7.7 .7 million in supplemental grants for special charter schools. The House slightly adjusted both of these figures down based on actual numbers. And I need to go ahead and share this with you. As we go through the document, you will see some adjustments in different program areas, and those are just later information. If you think about OPB, actually had to start their work back in October and, and nailing numbers down, it's just a fresher look. No, no mistake on anyone's part. It's just a fresher look at numbers. Um, we did. Uh, add some some other things in to the K-12 formula. Seven million for 57 school systems with decreased earnings and equalization per the new funding formula that you'll be seeing probably next week on the floor. 6.4 million to account for all the teachers who qualify for the science and math stipend that includes 939 teachers that were inadvertently missed in the initial count. And about 2.8 for the charter system grants to all the qualifying systems and those with enrollment growth. The governor's proposal includes an infusion of about 54 million for the state's in, uh, state employers' contribution for SHBP and about 50 million from local school systems for, for non cert personnel to the state health benefit plan. Um, that, along with the increased, increased employee premiums uh, and plan changes that you've already seen and heard about, will bring greater solvency to the system and help it remain intact. This, some IT adjustments are made throughout the agencies, but I'm just going to mention those at the very beginning. Also in health care, Medicaid and peach care payments to CMOs for the final month of the year of $81.2 as well as projected benefit needs and the restoration of the half percent provider cuts are fully funded. Matching funds for hospitals through the indigent care trust fund of about 21 million are also still in place now to leverage the uh, federal dollars. Those are the, the dish payments. Our other most significant change in health care was to put about 1.2 million in the grant and aid formula to hold harmless counties that lost funding in the revised formula for public health, something that had not been revised since 1971. And this will help those counties transition to the new formula. Subcommittee work also resulted in about 100 more slots and services uh, at the Marcus Institute and a one-to-one -one match for federal funding in that area. Those things constitute the, the biggest majority of the ads in the budget. Um, 
While it's not quite health care per se, we're pleased to say that the state is moving forward with facilities to house and treat prisoners through Medicaid, although there is some discussion of how and where it will be piloted. Um, that does allow us to then draw down federal funds for those prisoners it, through Medicaid. Also, our proposal includes the governor's proposal for converting 600 more beds into, into substance abuse treatment centers, uh, treatment centered incarceration beds at 4.2 million. And as we pr prepare to open more permanent beds, we add about 5.5 million in additional funds to the jail subsidy uh, until that transition takes place in fiscal year 13. Finally, in juvenile justice, there are about uh, 50 more non-secure residential beds in Savannah to alleviate their backlog, and about 3.3 million to open secure commitment beds in the Atlanta YDC. The House version also restores the GBI agent cut, agent position cuts, as well as increased fuel funds for state troopers by about a half million dollars to enable them to stay on the road and do more riding patrols instead of so many stationary patrols. Other than the new Atlanta YDC, the only other new program in this budget is about $5.4 million in fraud detection computer system at the Department of Revenue. This should show an immediate return on investment through this tax season. Uh, we support that recommendation as well. You'll see some money in the budget that adds for the computer system, but there's also money to beef up the call centers because they do expect an in increased call load. Finally, we recognize about $84 million in debt savings. Um, due to good management of our bonds and through the early retirement of debt, and refinancing and, and or financing at lower rates. We're supporting the two policy changes made through program transfers, the dissolution of the Aviation Authority, and the movement of workforce development funds under one umbrella into the Governor's office. These items do constitute the bulk of the changes in the amended budget. Uh, the governor has been very austere in his, in his uh, recommendation, and we have followed through with that, too, in the House. So, if you will, your budget document is in front of you, your tracking sheet, and we'll just kind of walk through this fairly quickly. And I would ask that if you have questions, if you would hold those to the end so we can handle them that way. Now, you'll notice that the, at the top of most every agency, there are common changes, and those common changes deal with uh, IT and telecom, and also SHBP. So, you'll notice that those are basically in every category we see. Your first change is going to come on page six. And this deals with the Georgia Senate, the Georgia House, and the Joint Offices of the General Assembly. We're just taking the 2% cut like we've asked, or the governor's asked all the other agencies. The governor doesn't put that in his uh, budget proposal because he doesn't have purview over it. It has to come from us. So those changes we've put in, and the same in the judiciary, you'll see that we've made changes that he didn't make, and that's because he doesn't have the ability to make changes. And I'll show you at the end of the document where those funds came from to make those changes. So you'll see those changes in the Senate, House, and the Joint Offices. Next changes, page 9. Section 4, under Audits and Accounts, 4.2.1. You'll see pass-through funding for operations of the Immigration Enforcement Board. This, of course, is from House Bill 87 we passed last year. The um, administrative piece of that bill placed that under eight or nine. Eight, I'm sorry. Section four. That might be easier than because the sections are in order. So. Section 4.2.1, sorry about that, $7,650, and just allows for that board to meet. Board has met four times to this point, and we anticipate they will, they will continue to meet. Uh, section 5, under Court of Appeals, two changes there, 5.1.1, personal services reductions. What we've done is add enough money to uh, remove two, two furlough days of three there. And the governor had also recommended that uh, one position, one staff attorney position, be filled there also. Going on to section six, you'll see a 
thirty-five thousand dollar. There is a difference between what the what what the governor had there at fifty-three thousand. Um, there's just an adjustment because we're going toward the end of the year. They've made it this far, so the subcommittee recommended reducing that just a little bit, and that's uh, to help handle additional caseload. They're already up about three hundred and fifty cases over last year, and look to be about five hundred cases total for the fiscal year. Next change you're going to see, of course, uh, Section 7, juvenile courts are the ads for IT that we mentioned earlier. Section 8, under prosecuting attorney's counsel, governor put some money there. He can do certain kinds of ads like this, but then we're the ones, uh, of course, the General Assembly gets the final say. Um, that 22626 the committee felt that that should be held, and that was uh, restoring part of the former director's salary, which was used for rental rate increases, but we've handled the rental, rental rate increases under 8.3.2. Section 9, Superior Courts. You'll see some uh, uh, a reduction there on 9.2.1. And that was dealing with some fuel increases that, that the committee felt could be done away with. And then there was a, uh, a, a, a small reduction under 9.2.2. They're restoring, the subcommittee is restoring three of six furlough days there. And then 9.3.1 is also a reduction of three uh, furlough days. So there will still be three furlough days within that department for now. Moving on to Section 11, under the State Accounting Office, you'll see a reduction there of 312000 That was for a program that they're not ready to, to roll with, and you'll see that 312 pop up again just in a little bit under DNR, and we'll explain to you what we've done there with it. Moving on to Section 12, DOAS. We have, we're recommending under 12.5.3 to remove the funding cap on state purchasing and administration and allow them uh, for the completion of the Team Georgia Marketplace. And what, what they're doing is, is rolling some of the technical college system purchasing into this. And then the other initiative they're working on is to make it easier for Georgia-based small businesses to be able to look in, and bid on, on state contracts. So looking forward to, to seeing them get that rolled out for everybody. Section 13, if you'll look at 13.4.3 uh, on the Department of Ag, there is a $55,000 reduction dealing with a contract signed under the previous administration for a Belgian trade office. Uh, we're currently under negotiations. Under Belgian law, that contract says you have to pay severance for two additional years after the employee is terminated. So that's in litigation. I've got to give a lot of credit to Commissioner Black for trying to negotiate that down. And it looks like there's going to be a positive outcome there. 13.4.4. Uh, H-1B and H-2A guest worker program. I, I've got to give a shout out to all of our, our South Georgia folks that brought this item to our attention. After the passage of House Bill 87 last year, of course, you, you read and heard a good bit about some of the things that happened with crops in the field. There, there almost was a perfect storm, unfortunately, within agriculture last year. An early season, bumper crops, then some rain that messed things up, and then kind of uh, waters got muddied even more with House Bill 87 and just the lack of understanding of, of the bill, uh, both by the employers and by the employees. And what this money will go to do is fund a couple of positions at the Department of Ag to work directly with producers to understand and walk themselves through the application process there. And we'll see this again in the 13 budget, but uh, Chairman Houston, Chairman Roberts, and just tons of folks, uh, uh, South, our South Georgia members came to us with this idea. So we need to give a shout out to them for that. Moving on to um, look at section 15 under DBHDD, you'll see some Changes at the bottom of the sheet, 15.4.7. There is a reduction of 500,000 there the subcommittee uh, took. 
and it's just based on the prior year expenditures and lapsed funds, and that's just taking that money. They then spread that money into two different places under 15.4.8 and 15.7.1. Uh, the 4.8 line is to continue the project and opening doors to recovery in southeast Georgia. And then under 15.7.1 is a $250,000 ad that is a one-to-one -one match with federal money of $500,000 total for the Marcus Autism Center to allow for 100 additional children to be treated there. Very important to understand that catching children in the early years, ages three to five, it's much cheaper to treat a child with autism at that point than it is to let them grow into adulthood or even into early teenage years or even into the late adolescent years. So catching the kids early there and giving them help is, is a lot cheaper on the state, but it's a lot cheaper on the parents and allows the parents actually to be able to work instead of having to take care of the child. Uh, under 15.10.1, Departmental Administration, the subcommittee, uh, Chairman Dempsey, has, or Chair Lady Dempsey, I'm sorry, is uh, she and her subcommittee are committed to finding out exactly how many folks are on the waiting list. So what we're just instructing them to do is to come up with a viable waiting list of people that are waiting to receive services there. Section 16 under DCA. 16.11.1, you'll see a small reduction of 200000 to the REBA grants. They have quite a large reserve there. Uh, they've taken just a small cut here, and you'll see some of this money show back up in a few minutes. But uh, understand, REBA grants are very important, and we realize that, and we understand that at some point they're going to come back and need additional funds to help complete projects, and we'll be there hand-in-hand -hand with them on that. And then look at 16.12.1, Georgia Rural, or I'm sorry, the Payments to Georgia Environmental Facility, or Finance Authority, the Georgia Rural, Rural Water Association contract, uh, there have been a recommended cut of $5,670 there. Uh, those folks are, are working with our rural water systems and doing things that we don't have any other way to get those things accomplished, such as some of the water testing. Felt like that that cut was, would have been detrimental in that area. Moving on to section 17, Department of Community Health, 17.6.10. You'll see a reduction there of 15,127,330. And that is just based on the uh, projected benefit need there and uh, the potential of a reimbursement also uh, dealing with the computer system on MMIS that we may see a match coming there that, that will help make that cut. So just just kind of projected need plus the, the, the hopes or the thoughts that and greater po great possibility that we're going to see that uh, restoration come. Uh, under community health on 1711.1, 1712.1, both of these, bless you, both of these come dealing with Mercer and Morehouse Schools of Medicine, and there had been taking a 2% cut there. The governor had taken those. Uh, Chairman Parrish and his committee felt that uh, they needed to have those restored. Currently at Mercer, there are 387 medical students. At Morehouse, there are 230 medical students that those two schools are are working to educate, to send into rural areas of the state and underserved and uh, poverty areas around the state. So that's what, what that ad back does. 17.13.2, a small ad of 40,000 there that um, goes to two of the slots for the Rural Physicians Program. And it's quite a, a narrow qualification band that these folks fit into to qualify for these grants or kind of a college loan payback program. They have to serve a county with a population of 35,000 or less. They have to have a Medicaid provider number and then actively treat Medicaid patients in order to receive that. So it's, it's about a $20,000 a year expense. 17.14.1, uh, another restoration of a 2% cut dealing with the undergraduate medical education. Uh, and that, that applies to Morehouse, Mercer, and Emory there that are helping us find physicians to go across the state. 
under Section 18, Department of Corrections. Notice one reduction at 18.3.1, and that's a reduction in management positions in the operations, planning, and training unit. Um, the, the committee felt that DOC might be just a little bit heavy in that particular area and felt those cuts would, would be all right to take and not, uh, not sacrifice any quality as far as management of our corrections facilities. And then you'll see a $6 million line right below that, 18.3.2. We agreed with the governor. Uh, that is the Bostic facility at Milledgeville, getting it up and ready to go uh, to house the uh, uh, basically nursing home eligible patients or prisoners. And then that allows us then to pull down Medicaid to pay for the care of those individuals as well. Moving on to section 21. Early Care and Learning, 21.1.1, a small cut of $7,500. Uh, these were a couple of, uh, of cuts that the agency had actually offered up but were not taken. It reduces contracts at a value of $4,929 and then utilizing federal funds to pay a portion of their telecom expense at $2,571. It's, it's less than a 1% reduction, so just a small reduction there. Then section 22, uh, under economic development, there's a telecommunications line item there on 22.2.2. .2. It was a $150,000 ad. And those telecom expenses are already addressed in the common changes. And so it was, it was not a necessary ad there since the adjustments are already being made elsewhere. Section 23, Department of Education. 23.1.1, and it will have a lot in common also with 23.25.1, dealing with it, uh, a cut in ag ed on 23.1.1. It was a 2% reduction. We lowered that to 1%, and then allowed flexibility for the department to make reductions in the agencies instead of being specific cuts to allow them to manage a little bit better. If you'll look at 23.12.1, there's a uh, small reduction of a cut there, and what we've done there is replace the residential treatment center money at 76628 and kept the other cuts that were in place. Under 2313.2, we're just acknowledging that $550 million in nutrition money that I was telling you about a while ago. It's not really new money. We're just account accounting for it here. It is federal money. Under 23.16.1, you'll see a $7 million ad. That's one-time funds for the 57 systems that are negatively impacted under the implementation of the new equalization formula should it pass. Under QBE 23.18.4, you'll see an adjustment there. That's the math and science teachers I mentioned earlier. Uh, through really no one's fault. It was basically a computer generated form that only allowed for one certificate to be listed under the individual. If it happened that that individual had a uh, K3 certificate listed first on their resume and the uh, math or science certificate was listed second, the first thing would be inputted. There was no place to put the other two in, so there were 939 teachers that were missed there, and we're just trying to correct that. That corrects it for fiscal year 11 and 12 because they were missed in both years. 2318.5, those are the charter system grants. Uh, those are the $100 per student grants given to charter systems. We have adjusted them previously for austerity reductions, so right now that's typically about an $87 or $88 payment to the systems. Under RESA's at 2319.1, you'll see a restoration of 60,000, I'm sorry, a, a lowering of the cut from 171 to 60,000, and basically that is the core services money for RESA's, um, just restoring part of that cut back into there. Under 2325.1, again, tech ed, and that's dealing with extended day, extended year. We lowered that cut from a 2.4 to 1.4 cut. Moving on to 
section 25. The only thing there under 25.2.1, we did change the language a little bit, telling them to reduce the funds but maintain the position count in that agency under forest management. Moving on to uh, section 26, under 26.10.1, you'll see a move there or an addition of 68 million in federal funds. That is uh, basically uniting the workforce development program that is split right now between the Office of the Governor and the Department of Labor, and it's pulling them both together under the Governor's Office where we statutorily um, establish the uh, Governor's Office Workforce Development. It just allows for a unified uh, uh, force or face in, in making sure that program works. Section 27, Department of Human Services. If you look at 27.3.2, that reduction is basically a fund swap. And what you want to do is look over at 27.18.1 and 27.18.2 there and then uh, that's part of that's reduction in federal funds. We lost about 37 million in TANF funds this year uh, as part of the balanced budget work in Washington DC and so there's where part of that reduction comes from but then part of that reduction is being swapped or the reduction from 27.3.2 is being moved as an add over there to 27.18.2. Moving on to section 27, still under DHS, 27.2, uh, 27.22.1 and 22.2. Uh, there were two small cuts taken there on Council of Aging. Uh, the committee felt the need to restore the 2% cut in order for the uh, council members to maintain their operations through the last quarter of the year. Section 28 under the Department of Insurance or Insurance Commissioner. You'll see under 28.5.1 and 28.5.3, there's a reduction there that's just swapped in between the two. That was based on a request from the Insurance Commissioner. He's fine with the cut, but just asked that it be put in a, in a different place so he could use it uh, uh, and better manage that way. Section 29. Under 29.4.1, the governor had asked for a reduction of 173,000 plus there, uh, taking out three positions that may become vacant this year. However, the committee didn't feel like GBI could, could lose any more investigators and felt that it would need to be put back in there. They've already, uh, if this was taken, they would be losing eight investigators. So right now it still holds at five and these three positions will still be funded. Section 30. If you look at 30.1.1 under community non-secure non commitment, uh, we're just doing a language clarification there saying that the 50 beds will be added at the Savannah River Challenge Wilderness Program. And that's just a clean up of language. No other adjustments there other than the commons. If you look at uh, Section 31, Department of Labor 3111one you'll see the funds moving from there to the Governor's Office of Workforce Development. And that is uh, all federal funds, no state funds are involved at all in that. Under Section 32, 32.1.1, um, there was an increase added by the Governor of 52,500 after trying to hire someone to fill that position. It is a very specialized position. They found that what was being offered there was not enough to secure a person, so we've bumped that a little bit in order to allow them to be able to hire someone that's, that's trained in that particular type of litigation. Section 33, Natural Resources. If you look at 33.9.1, you'll see where the recommendation from the governor was to eliminate seven field positions and five vacant positions. The 312,000 I mentioned earlier we use part of that here to hold those seven field positions and not eliminate them. They're already short-staffed as it is. And Chairman um, Roberts, where'd you wind up sitting down at? 
he tells a story of a couple of the game wardens talking about um, walking into the woods and when they got get there to the hunter the hunter says yeah I saw you walking up through the scope of my gun you know that's not an enviable, enviable position and certainly one that I wouldn't want to take uh, they know they're going into the woods with folks that have loaded guns and so we just want to make sure that they're staffed to the level they need to be so there's not a problem ever moving on to I would, uh, section 37, and there's something I want to point out here. Last year, last year, Chairman Chanel uh, passed legislation creating the new Department of Public Health, pulling it out back out from under DCH. And we were having a difficult time managing it under DCH. Agency itself was just so large, it was hard to manage it there. But I want you to look at the recommended cuts and reductions that the governor has taken there that we've agreed with and understand that the move has been a very good move. It's allowed us to save a considerable amount of money. Uh, two, I guess, success stories. A lot of the testing that was being done by the Department of Public Health was not being billed out correctly to hospitals. Uh, that is that's about a $10 million correction uh, that they've been able to make in, in billing. So it's been a $10, $10 million increase into, into the general fund. Also about a million and a half dollars, I think it is, in federal money that was not being pulled down. We've been able to pull that down too. So it's, it's been quite successful. If you'll look at 3711.1, uh, that is the new grant and aid formula, then the uh, hold harmless money there of $1.2 million. Just wanted to point that out for you. Section 38, Department of Public Safety. Under 38.5.1, you'll notice the ad I mentioned about the state patrol or state trooper uh, fuel cost raising from 200000 to 500000 The 200000 basically got them back to a break even. The 500000 allows them to actually put the troopers back on the road patrolling and does account for 35 new troopers that will be on the road by May and the fuel that they'll need. So that's that's something badly needed there for those, for them, especially with the increased fuel costs that we've seen. Uh, section 40, just real quickly, no, no changes there, but uh, the committee stayed with the 2% overall cuts there. Section 41, Department of Revenue. Uh, line 41.0.2, you'll see an adjustment in the telecom expense. Uh, it's one time true up that the governor's office of planning budget came back to us with it's 3.7 million that they needed to put back in in order to true up the uh, gets expense and technology expense there so that's a one time add there under 41.8.3 uh, you'll see where we're agreeing to the, uh, the the funds to purchase I'm sorry let me back up telling you wrong there's there's tax compliance is the other issue I think it is I'm sorry 41.4.1 my bad 4.9 million there is that pilot program I was talking about in, in fraud detection a computer program it's estimated that it'll bring in approximately 60 million dollars in the first year or recover 60 million dollars in fraudulent applications that were just being missed 41.8.3 We've had several people come to us with an issue dealing with uh, printers and your local county tag offices and, and tax offices there that Department of Revenue had been providing. Those printers have worn out, need to be replaced. It's, it's, we feel like the state's obligation to do so. We're just telling uh, Department of Revenue to fund that from existing funds and they sell tag data to certain companies for different things to figure out you know, what, what vehicles are being bought in the state and that sort of thing. And what we're doing is just telling them use those funds for that replacement piece there. Moving on to Section 42, Secretary of State. 42.4.1, uh, a restoration of $150,000 cut recommended by the governor. That provides funds to help maintain current facilities. The Secretary came to us and was, was afraid that that cut would require him to close potentially an office. And so we're just trying to keep that from happening. 
Under 42.5.1, the Georgia Board of Pharmacy, you'll see a $35,000 ad there. That goes toward the uh, pharmacy testing, and so that's an ad there for that. Section 43, Soil and Water Conservation Commission. There were two cuts under 43.2 and 43.3. Subcommittee felt it was necessary to add those back. These are the folks that are dealing with the monitoring of, of ag wells and water use in South, South Georgia and all through the state where there are ag wells being monitored. They're already on a shoestring budget, and I think their budget's already been cut about 45% over the last several years. So we need to make sure that uh, we keep that up and running. That is very important for our negotiations between Alabama and Florida uh, on on our water issues. Section 45 under student finance, 45.11 and 45.12 is basically a swap of $45,000. There were a couple scholarships that were not used at um, under one of the programs under scholarship grants. We moved that 45,000 into ROTC grants at North Georgia College. So that's just a basically a swap, no big change. Uh, section 47, TCSG, again, uh, the committee felt that 2% cuts were all right there, and so that's, that's what you're seeing is a 2% cut. Section 48, the first change is dealing uh, in Airport 8, Airport 8 under 48.1, uh, there was a, a uh, proposed $55,000 cut. Uh, the committee felt that it was necessary to go in and add $200,000 there in airport aid. That $200,000 goes toward a 95 to 5 match on funding. So that $200,000 pulls down about $10 million in federal money uh, for local airports to be able to use to, to work on ILS systems or any other uh, security issues that, that may, may pop up. Looking on under 48.2 and several of the other areas, and I'll point those out as we go through them. Uh, House Bill 806, we just passed out of committee. These are the results of what that bill does. You'll see under 48.2.5, $461 million there, $300 million of that, which will go to the Northwest Corridor Project. The governor is very committed on that 575-75 project up there being something that the state does. So we don't give up our state sovereignty to be able to build roads and meet needs up there for 50 or 60 year period. So there's where part of that's going. The rest of the money that is scattered throughout goes back to your local communities to do projects and allow contract lettings to begin back at our old contract letting rate of about $60 million a month. So it, it puts feet on the ground, shovels in the dirt, and gets things going. If you look at 48.3.2, you'll see an ad there of 357 million, 48.4.2, an ad of 50 million, 48.6.1, 5 million there, 48.7.1, 61 million there, 48.8.2, 35 million there, and 48.9.1, 2 million there. It's basically a spread of about 713 million that's put into there that gets stuff rolling. Uh, very quickly. Going on toward the end of the budget, if you look at section 51 dealing with uh, bonds, general obligation bonds, I want to point a couple things out to you there, help you understand these things. Under geo bonds 51.1.1, uh, the governor shows an increase of funds of 3.188 million. That is basically where he can park money for us then to use to take care of the GETS and SHBP issues in the, in the judiciary and in the House, Senate, and joint offices there. So that's what that money was used for. You'll see a, a slight change also under 51.1.2 in reduced debt service. That, that actual reduction in debt service also allowed us to fix the issue in GBI and the issue in DOR. Uh, dealing with gets so that uh, that's pretty much it y'all thank you mr. chairman looks like you have just a few questions to start with first is uh, chairman Roberts 
by accident, but I, I, just to clarify, I though, can turn you off. All those ads is money that's previously been budgeted. Yes. This is money now that's in that carryover that we discussed earlier. Exactly. The previous year. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, that's the only question you seem, well, you seem to have. All right, Mr. Chairman, I, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Amos has uh, got it. There is a question. No. Chairman Emerson. Can you pick up your microphone, Chairman? Hit your button. There you go. Yeah, it does. Got it. Now you're on. <coughs> it's on. It's on. working. Hello. There you go. Okay. You're on. Uh, I've received four calls this week already having to do with the uh, community, Department of Community Health where they're supposed to be holding some kind of vote to reduce waiver uh, amounts, and they say it's because we're cutting their budget. It's not in this budget. It'll be in the 13. You're talking about now in comp waivers? Yeah, we're we're still working on that to find out what the what the root of that issue is. It was under the governor's recommendations. Subcommittee is not taking it up yet, though. Thank you. All right. That's all the questions I see, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Well, I would appreciate your affirmative vote on this. And well, uh, the chairman has uh, made a motion. Is there a second? All those in favor of the 2012 appropriations measure signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Just want to let everybody know that the bill and tracking sheets will be posted on the website later on this morning. Thank you, everybody. We're adjourned.